this video we're going to take a look at the flat file schemas and we're actually going to run a wizard to build our schema for us. So here I've created a, a much simpler file than the purchase order we had a while ago. This is simply, for instance, a transaction that might tell us to add a new customer to our database. And here we have on the first row the customer number, the customer name, his address, city, state, zip, and then the second row we have the second customer. Okay. So what we want to do is run the wizard. To do that, we come to our project and we say add, and this is slightly off the screen, I click add new item. Not generated item, but just new item. And then here under schema files, we're going to pick the flat file wizard. And then here I want to give it a logical name. So this is something like flat file new customer positional and it's going to default to XSD. So it actually is an XSD schema. And of course the W3Org doesn't have something called a flat file schema. So what BizTalk does is adds annotations to the schema to handle all the flat file manipulation. And so as we go through the wizard, we have to give it some data here. So first we have to point to our instance file. We have to have a, a valid file to actually use as a model. And so this is the file that I was showing you in Notepad right here flat file add customer position dot text. Then the record name I'm going to make the same as that. And I do want to click this count position in bytes. Then I'm going to click next. And what we're going to do here is says select the portion of the data to define the record. And so we actually have two records here. So I'm just going to select one row including the uh, notice this little uh, Oh, it look, I can't describe the character. It looks like two two tiny uh, less than signs, but it's one single character. That's used to, to designate the carriage return line feed. So a paragraph symbol is a carriage return, and that next little symbol there is the line feed. I click Next, and I want to use it not by delimiter, but by relative positions. And you can see my data again now, just the one line that I've selected. I then go to the next screen, and this is a nice little GUI, and they actually let you resize it, which is good. And what you do is you come here, and you basically put the cursor at the beginning of each field and just click the left mouse button. And what that does, it basically counts for you. You can see how when I put the cursor there, it says 36, 30, whatever. So Garland is the name of the city, actually starts in 49. Texas, 61. Zip code was 64, and so on. If you want to get rid of one, you just click on it again and it goes away. So you want to make sure you don't have any dummy ones in here. Okay, so now we've identified all of our fields. We click Next. And here, it's going to give it the field names. I'll show you. You can either change it here or you can change it in the schema. So here I could put Customer Num. I have to double click to get in that field. Customer name, customer address, uh, customer city, customer state, and customer zip. And if you had a field that was non numeric, you could select uh, the data type here, but right now all mine are strings. And you can also choose between elements and attributes when it builds the schema but I want it to be elements. Okay, so I'm going to click Next. You see what we have here. And I'm going to click Finish. And what that did, it built the schema for us. So this is a special type of schema, again, a flat file schema. How do you know it's a flat file? Two ways. There's a special tab down here. A regular schema does not have the flat file tab. And how do you know it's a flat file schema other than that? You can click the schema itself, the, the node above the root element. And then you come over here and scroll down and you'll see a property called standard and the possible values are XML or flat file. So now if we look at the uh, flat file here, you can see all the different positions and it basically saved the counters and computed the links for us. The other thing we could do is look at the XSD and you can see here how the annotations work. So like right here, you see B, B colon. The B means BizTalk. So if we go to the very top here, you'll see uh, B is an extension. 
a Microsoft BizTalk extension for flat files. So every time you see a B colon here in the file, it's going to be some kind of flat file extension. And this is saying, for instance, to get the customer name, whoops, sorry, you have to go from the left, like 18 positions over, and it's the second field in the file. To find the customer address, you've got to go over 23 positions, and so on. So this is a flat file schema. So a while ago, in a prior video, we saw how you could validate data. So here, if we set, let's grab our file. This is our test data file. So if we go to the schema, flat file, new customer, positional, I'm going to properties, and I'm going to go to the input name and put my test data there. We can now do right click, oh, one more thing we have to do, properties again. Uh, instead of, let's see, validate instance, native. So when it says right here, validate a file, we can validate an XML file or a native file. Now it automatically had the word native here, which means non-XML, which means like a flat file. So now when we do right click, uh, validate instance, you check your output window here. And it basically says that it succeeded. And what else can we look at? Let's see. It says generated XML output. So when you see a file name in your output window, if you hold down your control key, see if you just mouse over it, it'll tell you to do control plus click. So now I'm holding down the control key. And see the cursor, instead of being an I beam, when I have the control key, it shows the little hand. Then when I click on that file, you can actually see the XML that it generated right here. And so you can real quick see, does Garland look like a city? Does Texas look like a state? And so on. So it looks like we got it more or less correct. So now we actually want to run it through with a receive port and a send port and see how it works. So to do that, we're going to have to have a pipeline. So we come up here and we're going to say add new item. And then we're going to ch click pipeline. And you have send and receive pipeline. So right now we're concerned about receiving. And I don't want all that. I want to call it flat file. Add customer uh, receive pipe, something like that. And it will have a BTP, BizTalk Pipeline suffix. So when you start a pipeline, you see this uh, shapes like this. Uh, looks a little bit like an orchestration, but it's not. So basically you have, these are called stages. The first stage is always decode, and that's where you could decrypt a file, for instance. So over here in the toolbox, you're going to see the tools that will fit into these items over here. And they're actually smart. So like if you try to put the XML assembler in the decoder, it won't go. You cannot drag and drop it there. But if you put the disassembler here, you can see it will drop. And if you don't want it there, you can right click, I mean, you can just hit delete on it. So for instance, if you wanted to uh, decrypt a certain type of file, that would be like an AS2 decoder. AS2 is a uh, encryption format, especially for EDI, but could also be used for other types of files. So you would then define over here what kind of decoding you want to do. And this demo, all we're interested in is the disassembler. So we don't want an XML disassembler, we want a flat file disassembler. Then you come over here, we're going to ignore the header and the trailer. All we need is the document schema itself. So when you look here, you're going to scroll down and if you don't see your schema here, you may actually have to go back and do a build on your project. But I see it here, flat file, new cust, positional. Okay, so at that point I'm pretty much done. Oh, I need to show you the other two shapes. There's a validate shape, which we'll talk about in another demo. And then we have resolve party. And a party is part of a trading partner management system that's built into BizTalk. And that has to do with orchestration. So we have no concern about that in this demo. So now we're going to build and deploy our project. So let's just do a build first or rebuild, make sure we're, we don't have any compiler errors. OK, it says rebuild all succeeded. Then we're going to do a deploy. Actually, we'll just deploy the whole solution. OK, so the solution was deployed now. 
Now, anytime you deploy a solution, it's very important to remember to do this. Come to the BizTalk Admin Console, go to your host instances, and then do a re uh, restart here. Um, uh, uh, when I was practicing this a while ago, before I cut the video, I forgot to do this, and I was getting errors like it would say, I can't load the pipeline. Well, that was because even though the pipeline was deployed and in the GAC, if you don't restart the host, BizTalk can't see it. And so anytime you deploy anything, always restart your host instance or host instances. We'll, in a later video, we'll talk about why you want to have more than one host here. Okay, so now we're ready to set up our receives. So let's just make sure we're refreshed here as well. And we're going to set up a receive port and a receive location. So let's call this receive new customer flat file positional. Let's turn on as much tracking as we can. And then the receive location, we'll have to add a new one. So I call it rloc. This is going to be a flat file, or just a file. And then we're going to configure that to be a certain folder. I've already added the folder on the disk. And this is the name of the folder right here. So it's easier for me to paste that there. And it's not an XML file that we'll be receiving. We could put like star dot positional or star dot dat or star dot text, but it's not XML. So I'm going to put star dot star. No matter what file gets dropped in that directory, that's what we want to deal with. Now here's going to be your pipeline. Um, so we're going to look for our flat file pipeline, which happens to be the first one right here. And if you don't see your pipeline here, remember to just go over here and refresh the receive locs, receive locations, or re refresh the whole application, or even do an upper level refresh. Then you should see it if you properly deployed your project that has the pipeline in it. So we're going to click that. And I think that's all we need there. Let's just check one more thing. Oh yeah, there's no retries on a receive. Um, that's done. We're done with that. So under receive locations, we need to start it. Enable. Then we need a send port. So we'll go here. These are our PO schema ports we did in a prior demo. So we're going to right click, add a new one. Right now we're always using static one-way ports. We'll talk about the other types of ports later. Um, this is going to be called flat. No, it's not going to be a flat file anymore. Let's call it new customer uh, out. And it actually will be XML at this point. So we're going to put a file here, configure, paste, and just change this to out. And we'll call it new customer underscore. And again, the message ID will be the GUID of the message. We'll say OK. The pipeline going out should be XML. And we'll set up the retries here to be every one minute. And we'll, we'll need a filter here. So let's filter on the BT message type. So we're looking for BTS message type right there. And this is where we could paste it in from our, our um, schema. So if we come down here and find our schema, click here. It's not the target namespace. It's the, and it's not the root reference always. I'll make sure I pick the right thing here. I think it is this one. No, 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 no. It is the, uh, hang on. It's not that either. Okay, what it should be is the target name space followed by a pound sign followed by the root element name. I wish there was an easier way we could find that. Then, I think we'll see, let's turn tracking on here as well. And now we've created our send port and let's start it. Okay, now we've already started our host after we did our deploy. So we're now ready to try to copy a file. 
So we're going to the new customer file in folder or directory and we're going to copy right here flat file add customer positional. Just to remind you again what we're dropping here, this is the file we're dropping. Okay. So we'll drop it in, it's picked up, we'll go to hat and we'll see if there are any errors. So we run the query in hat and this is 759 you can see that what happened here is we received one file and we sent two files. So if we go to the output directory for the new customer, we have two files and using Total Commander again, I can preview those. And you see that what it actually did, it not only read our input file, it actually split it for us. So what we have here is one customer, the first one is 102 which is John Doe, which was this line, and the other file is 101 Neil Walters, which is me, and that's this line. So there's a, a concept called debatching, and we'll talk about that in a future video, but basically this flat file got debatched for us because of the way I highlighted the file when I ran the schema builder. So just to show you this in the browser here, this is the, one of the two files that came out and you can see John Doe is the customer name and so on. 102 is the customer number. I don't know why he spells out XML namespace equals quote on every one of these. That seems a little strange. Oh, I see. Because right here there's no namespace. But anyway, it is correct. And I think that concludes what I wanted to show you here. So just to recap from our Visio diagram, we dropped in a flat file into a directory on the hard drive. That directory was being monitored by a receive location. The receive location was tied to a special pipeline called the receive flat file pipeline. That converts it to XML. The receive port then kind of continues it on, puts it in the message box database and then we had a send port that was listening or subscribed or filtered to those types of messages and then it wrote XML to the output file here and that completes the cycle of that run. Actually it wrote two files over here because of the splitting that occurred in the receive pipeline.